Hello everybody and welcome to another Linux for Programmers tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to be covering cron jobs and the cron tab. Now a cron job is a job or a task or a script, or whatever you want to refer to it as, that is scheduled to run at a certain time. Now you can schedule jobs to run every minute, every five minutes, every first day of the month. You can schedule them at pretty much any time increment that you want and it's extremely useful to do so. For example, if you want to back something up every 24 hours or you want to send an email to someone every week, whatever it may be, you can use the cron tab and cron jobs to do that. So with that said, let's dive in after a quick word from the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Linode. Linode is one of the best companies for developers. They make it easy to manage and scale your infrastructure with their intuitive cloud manager, API slash CLI, and one-click apps. They also provide predictable pricing. You always know how much you're going to be paying when you use Linode. Not to mention their award-winning support. There is no tiers, no hands-off, just highly trained service professionals who actually answer the phone and solve your issue 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Get started with Linode by hitting the link in the description and claim $100 in free credit when you sign up with a new account. So with that said, let's dive in to cron jobs. So the first thing that we need to discuss when we're talking about cron jobs is our cron tab. Now a cron tab is specific to each user. So every user on the system will have their own cron tab. And this cron tab is kind of the manager of our cron jobs. So if you want to view your cron tab, you can type cron tab and then hyphen L, and this will view the current cron tab. Now, in our specific situation, we don't have a cron tab for the root user because we've yet to create one. So what we need to do is we need to make a cron tab. So to do that, you type cron tab and then hyphen E. Now, hyphen E stands for edit. So if you had an existing cron tab, this would allow you to edit the existing cron tab. If you don't have one, then it will prompt you to create a new one. And specifically, when you run this command, it will actually ask you what editor you want to view your cron tab in. So you can pick Nano, you can pick VI, you can pick Emacs. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones you can pick as well, but choose whatever one you like. Now, in my situation, you're going to see that when I run this command, it brings me into my cron tab and it's being edited in Nano. Now, it probably is going to prompt you to pick which editor you want to uh, write or view your cron tab in. So in that case, you need to select what editor. I would recommend Nano. It's just the simplest in my opinion. And well, that's what I'm using here. So select your editor and then it should bring you into a tab that looks like this. So this window right here is the cron tab and the cron tab allows us to manage our cron jobs. So we can have multiple cron jobs that are all scheduled to run at different times or even the same time for that matter. And we handle all of the scheduling and all of the jobs that we want to run in the cron tab. Now, I would recommend that you actually read through what is here because it's not that long and it gives you a pretty good idea of how this actually works, but I'm going to skip through it and let you guys read this at your own pace. So now what I'm going to do is show you how to set up a cron job. So a cron job, again, is just running something at a certain time increment. So every 10 minutes, every hour, as I've said, it's just some script or some command that you want to run at a certain point in time. So let's say that you wanted to run like the ls command. You actually could run that command every five minutes, every 10 seconds, every you know two hours, whatever. You can run it at whatever frequency you want. You also could run a backup script, for example, at you know every day or every two hours or every Sunday or every first day of the month. You can set the scheduling to be as advanced as you want. But any command that you want to run, you can put inside of here and schedule it so that it happens at a certain point in time. Now, you also can have commands that run at boot. So, for example, when you first boot the system, you could have a command that runs at midnight, that runs annually, so once a year. There's a ton of different things that you can do. So I'm just trying to give you an idea of what's possible in here. And let me show you a few examples of things that we can actually run. So let's say that we want to run the ls command every one minute. Well, what I would do to run that is I would type the following. So I'm going to start with actually five asterisks here and then the ls command. Now, the basic syntax for your cron job is you have five asterisks separated by spaces, and then you have the command afterwards. Now, you replace these asterisks here with what you need for scheduling. So, for example, if I wanted to run this job here every five minutes or every one minute, I forget what I said, let's go with one minute, we would put slash one after the first asterisk. Now, what this means is run this command ls every one minute. So it doesn't matter what minute we're currently on. 
But as soon as we set this command to run, now every one minute, this command will run because we put slash and then one. So the asterisks represent the following going from left to right. And I'll put this up on the screen. I have an image I think that I can show you. We have minute and then we have hour. Then we have day of month. We have month and we have day of week. Now it is not mandatory to put numbers or values where all of the asterisks are. In fact, that's the reason why you have the asterisks is so that you can kind of have a placeholder if you don't want to actually use a specific increment of time. So for example, this is all we need to do to run the ls command every one minute. Since this first column here stands for minutes and you can kind of see right above, it actually shows you what they stand for. We just put slash standing for every and then one standing for the amount of minutes. So one minute and then we run this command every one minute. So if I wanted to run a command every 15 minutes, then what I would do is type asterisk slash 15 and then I would type four more asterisks and then the command. So maybe I could just do something like cat. Now, of course, we know that's not really going to do anything for us, but we can go ahead and run that command. Now, we also can run scripts, right? And this is probably the more useful thing. If we have a script that we've written, we could run that command every hour, every day, whenever we want. So anyways, let me show you a few more things that we can do here for the uh, the syntax of this cron job. So if I wanted to run something, not every 15 minutes, but at every 15 minutes. So when I say at every 15 minute, I mean like 115, 215, 315, 415, 515, so on and so forth. Not every 15 minutes, but at the 15th minute of every hour, then what I would type is 15 and then four asterisks like that. Now, I understand this is slightly confusing, but when you want to schedule something every, so at an increment of some time, you do the asterisks, you do the slash, and then what that increment is. If you want it to run at a specific time, and in this case, we want it to run at every 15 minute of the hour, we just write that time in the appropriate column. So now we'll run at every 15th minute of every hour. And then again, I can put whatever command I want. I'm just going to do placeholder command here because it doesn't matter what the command is. I'm just trying to show you the syntax. All right. So now let's say that we actually wanted to run something at every fifth minute, 10th minute and 15 minute of the hour. So I want to run the same command multiple times throughout the hour. Then what I would do is the following. I could do something like five, 10, and uh, I don't think we need spaces, five, 10, 15, and then four asterisks and then my command. This again means that we're going to run at 105 and 110 and 115, then 205, then 210, then 215, then 305, then 310, then 315. You get the idea. It's the fifth, 10th and 15th minute of every hour. Now, that's pretty hard to pronounce, but <laughs> hopefully you get the idea. So that is how that one works. Now, let's say you wanted to execute something just every hour. You want to do it every hour. What you do is you would type zero and then you would put your four asterisks and then the command. Now, this means run at the zeroth minute of every hour. So you will have it happen every hour. So we will continue in one second. But I need to quickly thank the other sponsor of this video, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. They have a data structures crash course, a mock interviews feature, and over 120 coding interview questions. Get started with Algo Expert today by hitting the link in the description and using the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. Now, let's say we wanted to run something every four hours. Now we're moving out of the minute column and we're going to move into the hour column. So what I'm going to do is type the following. I'm going to type zero. So not, oh, sorry, zero. Then I'm going to type asterisk slash four and then three more asterisks and then my command. Because this means uh, we're in the hour column here, by the way, in the second asterisk that we are going to run every four hours at the zero with minute of that hour. So that's what this command tells us every four hours at the zeroth minute, run this command. And that's as easy as it is. Now, let's say we wanted to run something every day. Well, then what we type would type is zero, zero, and then three asterisks, because the hour column is telling us the amount of hours that we want to run this at. So this pretty much means run at midnight every single day, run at the zeroth minute and zero hour of every day. Now, let's say we didn't want this to run at midnight, but we still want it to run every day. We could set it to run at, say, 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. I could say zero, five, and then asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. This is in 24 hour time, by the way. And when I put this zero five, this means run at the fifth hour of every day and the zeroth minute of that fifth hour. So this means we're going to run at 5 a.m. every single day. 
And then we could do a bunch of other ones as well. So let's say now that I wanted to run something on the first day of every month. Well, I would pick the time that I want to run this at. So let's say I actually want to run this at something like 1030. I put 30, then I could put 10. This means we want to run at 1030. And I want to run this on the first day of every month. So what I can do is I can put the day in the month that I want this to run at. That's what DOM stands for, this third column. So 30, 10, 1, and then two asterisks. And then the command after this is going to run on the first day of every month at 1030. So now let's say I actually wanted to run this every three months. Well, if I want to run this at 1030 on the first day of the month, but every three months, what I would do is the following. I would say 30, 10, I would say one, assuming I wanted this to run on the first day of each month. Then I would say asterisk slash three, and then one more asterisk, and then my command. Now that's because we're moving into the fourth column now, which is the month. So when I say asterisk slash three, this means that I want this to run every three months. So hopefully that's clear, but this is 1030 on the first day of the month, every three months. Now, lastly, we can also pick the day of the week that we want to run a command on. So let's say we want to run a command every Monday through Friday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but we don't want to run it on the weekends. What I could do is the following. I could type zero, zero, assuming we want this to run at midnight and then asterisk, asterisk, and then one hyphen five. So now we've moved into the day of week column. So the day of week column allows us to schedule tasks to run on certain days of the week. So when I say one to five, that means run this from Monday to Friday. And the reason that works is because zero represents Sunday and six represents Saturday. So from zero to six are valid integers here, are valid numbers to put. I also can put a range. So one hyphen five, which means run it in all of the days in between one and five. Now, of course, I could do one, two, three, four, five like that as well. This is the same thing as doing one hyphen five, uh, but you are allowed to put a range. And this just means run from Monday to Friday. Now, the reason I have these two asterisks in between is because I don't care what day of the month it is. I don't care what month it is. I just care what time I'm running this at. So I'm running this at midnight and I'm running this every Monday to Friday. So you are allowed to skip asterisks when you uh, write these commands out, but you just have to understand what you're actually scheduling this for. Now, most commonly, you're going to want to run something every day or every hour or every few minutes. You probably don't need to do something super complex like I'm showing you here. But this, again, is just to give you an introduction to how the cron jobs work and the basic syntax. So you probably will have to look up the syntax when you're doing something more specific in the future. But hopefully this gives you a good idea. So that was pretty much all I wanted to show you for the cron job syntax. There was a few more things to show you, though, and these are kind of shortcuts for this scheduling syntax. So let's say you don't want to deal with all this. You don't want to have to figure out what all the asterisks mean. Well, fortunately, there's a few little tags that we can use. So if I wanted to run something daily, I could just type at daily, which is just kind of a shortcut that you're allowed to use inside of here. And then the command that I want to run afterwards. Now, if I wanted to run something every day at midnight, then what I would do is say midnight. Now, this actually means the exact same thing as the daily command, uh, but it's just a bit more verbose because by default, daily is going to run at midnight. In fact, almost all of these tags that I'm showing you by default will run at midnight if that's a valid option for the default. All right. Now, there's another one that we can use that's pretty useful. This is reboot. So if you want something to run no matter what, when you start uh, the machine or when it reboots, then you would say at reboot and then whatever the script is that you want to run. Now, there's a few more. Uh, you can probably guess what they are, but we can do weekly. We can do annually like that. We can do yearly, which is the exact same thing as annually. Again, I don't know why they have multiple, but you can use both of those. They also have hourly. And I think that's about it. I believe there's monthly as well. I don't think I showed that one. So those are kind of the tags that you're allowed to use that are just shortcuts for this syntax right here. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of how cron jobs work. Now, what I will show you as a last thing here is how you actually, you know, put your own scripts here, because it's one thing to understand the syntax. But how do I point to a script that I wrote and schedule that to run? So I'm just going to exit out of this. I'm not going to save this because I don't want all of that. And I'm going to show you that if I say ls here, we have a .sh file. I have my test.sh. So let's say I wanted to run this script every minute. Well, what I would do is I would go inside of my cron tab, so cron tab hyphen e, and then inside of here I would point to that script. So what I would say is let's go, you know, 
asterisk slash one asterisk 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 and then we're going to go slash root slash and then test dot sh and i'm just going to put a dot here because that's how we actually execute this command so now if i were to save this cron tab what would happen is this test dot sh file would run every one minute and that's all you need to know that's how this works you need the path to the file or to the script that you want to run and yeah, you just put it here. Now, of course you could write commands as well. So you want to run a Python script. I'm not going to put some syntax for the cron job, but you could say Python or Python three, and then whatever the path to the script is. So maybe slash root slash script dot P Y. And well, that would go ahead and run the Python three command with that script. So hopefully that is clear, but that is how cron jobs work. And that is the cron tab. And that's all I have for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another YouTube video.